So this is the 2017 AP Physics 1 FRQ question number 3. So in this question we have this disc. It's going to be colliding with a, like a rod that's on a pivot point. And the first question is basically asking where should we launch this? Should we launch it close to the pivot at the center of mass of the rod or uh, beyond that? So the answer would be we're going to go to the right of C here and they want you to explain so you know if we're farther away uh, this is going to exert a greater torque remember torque is proportional to the distance how far you are from the axis of rotation so the farther this is it's going to exert a greater amount of torque and hence uh, it would have a greater angular velocity the other thing you could talk about is uh, the farther you are from this the greater initial angular momentum the disc has with respect to the pivot and therefore if it has more momentum to start with it should have more momentum to end with. Question B you have this weird looking equation here and they're asking does it agree and the key idea is we're just talking about x here and basically we just said as x increases then omega should also increase so the answer is yes and you would just essentially explain um, what we just said is x goes up, omega goes up, that's consistent with what we said earlier. Question C. In this question they're giving you another equation um, and they're asking you know why is this equation wrong? Um, there's a couple ways you can go about it. One would be the mass of the disk. Since this is in the denominator this is essentially saying as the mass of the disk increases then omega should be decreasing and that really that doesn't make sense right um, if the disc has a larger mass okay imagine like this was uh, you know a penny versus a, a dumbbell if you were to send a dumbbell in here it's going to have more momentum to start with and therefore it should have more momentum to end with and therefore it would have a greater angular velocity so that's one way you can go about talk about the mass of the disc you could also talk about the inertia of the rod as well this is a saying uh, as the inertia goes up then omega should also go up and that doesn't make sense either remember inertia is the resistance to change so this has a greater resistance to change than is this collides with this it should actually go at a smaller rotational and uh, velocity um, again because it, it's more resistant to that change you could also deal with um, uh, angular momentum as well in trying to describe that the next question letter D oh by the way just one quick thing with this D to the fourth power it's kind of a weird thing to have that in here um, as D increases remember the inertia actually does increase and that would be consistent because if the inertia increases um, of the rod just as I previously said the angular momentum should uh, angular velocity should decrease so that should be consistent I mean it probably isn't uh, the correct equation but it should be correct conceptually speaking alright letter D so now we're just gonna go ahead and derive the equation for this um, we're just gonna use variables so just make sure that your answer is only expressed in the, the terms they provide. Um, so in this one, we're just going to be using uh, conservation of momentum. So L initial should be equal to L final. The L initial in this is going to be the L of the disk. And then the L final is going to be the combination, right? So it's going to be the disk plus the rod together. So they actually give you the L for the disk. Um, do they give you the L for the disk? Thought they did. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, angular momentum is m times v naught times x. So this is going to be L m. L equals m times v naught times x. Okay. Now afterwards they do combine. So this would be the I for the disk plus the I for the rod times omega afterwards. Okay, the I for the disk uh, is given to you as mx squared. 
mx squared. And the i for the rod, they just want you to express that in terms of i. So that would be plus i. Okay, just finish it up. And so your final answer for omega should just be m v naught x divided by m x squared plus i. And I think that's a sufficient answer. I don't think you have to try to simplify this any further. Just make sure all your variables are consistent with the ones they want you to express it. Last question, letter E. Um, suppose it bounces off backwards. What would be true about the angular speed? Well, hopefully you know that this would be greater than. So conceptually, if you imagine this, we have our disk coming in, right? And it has its initial angular momentum, and that's going to all turn into a final angular momentum uh, of the rod-disk combination when they stick. Now when it bounces off, so this would be when they bounce, this one's going to go this way. So notice, this goes from an L going forward, and then it's going to have an L coming backwards this way. So it has a change. Let's imagine that the velocity is the same. It has a change of 2 L. So it's going in at L0. This is going to have a change in LF in the opposite direction. So the total change is from 2 L. Versus in this case, it's just going from L to an L final. So to compensate for this angular momentum in the backwards direction, this needs to have more angular momentum this way so that the total, when you add them up, the total should add up to your initial angular momentum. All right. So anyway, you'd want to explain that. I know I did, I did not explain that too well, but um, if you take your time, you should be able to explain that with the words.